we're asked to find the period of the given trigonometric functions. First, we have f of x equals 2 sine x minus 1 half cosine 2 thirds x. Notice here we have a summer difference of sine and cosine functions. We know when we have a single sine function or cosine function, the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b, where b is the coefficient of x. But when we have a sum or difference involving sine and cosine functions, the period is going to equal the least common multiple of the periods of each individual trig function. Let's begin by analyzing the graph to determine the period of f of x. Let's start with the y-axis, where x equals zero, and work our way to the right to see if we can determine when the graph starts to repeat itself. If we focus on the maximums, moving to the right, we have a relative max, a relative max, an absolute max, then the pattern starts to repeat. Relative max, relative max, absolute max, and so on. So analyzing the x-axis, notice how from zero to six pi radians, we have the graph of one period of the trig function, as well as from six pi to 12 pi. And therefore the period is equal to six pi radians. Let's go back and see if we can figure this out algebraically. Let's find the period of each individual trig function. Let's find the period of y equals two sine x, as well as y equals negative one half cosine two thirds x. For y equals two sine x, the period is equal to two pi divided by b, where b is one, and therefore the period is two pi. And then for y equals negative one half cosine two thirds x, the period is equal to two pi divided by two thirds, which is equal to two pi over one times the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves. Simplifying, we have the period is equal to three pi. So the period of g of x is equal to the least common multiple of two pi and three pi. which is equal to six pi. Now if we need to, we can list out multiples of two pi and three pi to determine the least common multiple. Multiples of two pi are two pi, four pi, six pi, eight pi, and so on. Multiples of three pi are three pi, six pi, nine pi, and so on. And here we can see the least common multiple of two pi and three pi is six pi. Let's take a look at a second example. We have g of x equals negative three sine four x plus two cosine six x. Let's first look at this graphically. Again, let's start at the y-axis, or x equals zero. Let's see if we can determine how long it takes for the graph to repeat itself. Again, if we focus on the maximums, moving to the right, we have an absolute max, a relative max, and then the pattern starts to repeat, absolute max, relative max, and so on. Analyzing the x-axis from zero to pi radians, we have the graph of one period, and then again, the graph starts to repeat. From pi to two pi, we have the graph of one period, and from two pi to three pi, we have the graph of one period. And now let's go back and figure this out algebraically. To do this, we find the period of each individual trig function where the first function is y equals negative three sine four x and y equals two cosine six x. Once we find these periods, the period of g of x will be the least common multiple of the two periods. So for y equals negative three sine four x, the period is equal to two pi divided by b, where b is four. Two pi divided by four simplifies to pi over two or one half pi and the period of y equals two cosine six x is equal to two pi divided by six, which simplifies to pi over three or one third pi. So the period of g of x is equal to the least common multiple of one half pi and one third pi. Again, if we need to, we can list out multiples. Multiples of one half pi would be one half pi, two halves pi or pi, three halves pi, four halves pi, which would be two pi and so on. Multiples of one-third pi would be one-third pi, two-thirds pi, three-thirds pi or pi, four-thirds pi, and so on. We can see the least common multiple is pi radians. 
which again is the period of g of x. I hope you found this helpful.